So hi, hello and welcome, Micropunter here and today in this video I'd like uh, to answer the question of why it is sometimes so difficult to see individual cells under the microscope. And uh, over here I want to give you an example, okay? So I'm going to pause this. I did uh, pre-record this on a video because it makes it a little bit easier for me to move my little arrow around here. So this here in the center is a rotifer. It is a multicellular animal made of approximately 1000 separate cells. Over here um, on the left uh, of it, we have a paramecium. It is a protozoan. It's a single-celled organism, one cell. Just imagine this here, a thousand cells over here, uh, one cell over here. So this can already you know, show a little bit something about the, the possible size difference of the cells. And here in the background, those little dots that you see swimming around, floating around here, these are bacteria. Each one of those dots is also a separate cell. So what we already see is that there's a huge difference in cell size between those bacteria called prokaryotes and uh, the paramecium over here, which is a eukaryote. Uh, yeah, these are just uh, some biological terms that some of you might already be familiar with. But the real question that I would like to answer today is, is why am I not able to see the 1000 individual cells um, of this rotifer over here? Okay, and now you're probably going to say, well, maybe that's because uh, they're too small to be seen. And that is actually not the real reason because uh, the cells of this rotifer are actually quite a bit bigger than the bacteria here in the background. Yeah. Um, there are actually several reasons why the individual cells cannot be seen. And this is actually also one of the reasons why for many years back in the day, in the 19th century, it was not um, quite uh, sure if animals um, are also made of cells. They first discovered cells in plants, because in plants you can see them quite easily, the separate cells, but not in animals. Okay. Um, so what I would like to uh, do now is, is I would like to illustrate this here using those protozoans here in, in, as well. Let me pause this again. Um, you have to understand that uh, the uh, each cell is surrounded by so-called a cell membrane and those cell membranes um, are actually quite thin okay so um what we have here is the cell membrane is always here on the outside uh, of uh, of a cell right um, over here this is again our paramecium from from before over here we've got some other protozoans and the cell membrane is on the outside now you're going to say well actually i can see it quite well because this is dark uh, line uh, yeah right at the border yeah, pretty much all of them have that, right? Um, and uh, I would simply want to explain to you, however, that the cell membrane is still too thin to be seen. And the dark line that we have here is actually because of the differences of refractive index. Again, we have to uh, have to explain what that means. Is is that the inside of the cell has a different refractive index on the outside, and at the border we are actually able to see this dark line. So this is actually something that the microscope actually produces, um, and is uh, actually not the cell membrane itself, which would be too thin. Okay, um, so the thing is, is that uh, essentially the refractive index inside the cell is different from the outside because the inside of a cell contains many, many different substances, minerals and salts and, and, and whatever, whatnot, thousands if not millions of different substances um, at a high concentration sometimes. And this changes the refractive index uh, to the surrounding medium. And this is why the microscope produces those, those dark lines here. Yeah. It's a little bit like this, is, is you're still able to see a glass of water standing on your table, um, even though the water is transparent and even though the, uh, the glass uh, is transparent. Both of them are transparent, uh, still you're able to see it, and that is also because of the difference of refractive index. If you were to put the glass of water into water, yeah, into an aquarium for example, then you would not be able to see the glass of water anymore because the refractive ind indices are the same. Yeah? And this explanation actually explains also why we're not able to see the individual cells of uh, multicellular animals like those rotifers. Yeah? So um, again, let's uh, have a look here. If you look inside here, I mean, you are able to see that there's a different color in here, right? And that's because of the food that it has eaten, but I'm not able to see the individual round uh, cells. And the reason again is, is because the cell in, in, in the middle um, is surrounded by other cells. Uh, and so this kind of means that the refractive index of one cell is the same as the surrounding other cells. And for this reason, the cells kind of blend into each other, just like a, a cup of water inside water would kind of blend in. 
uh, and you're not a glass of water, right? Um, so you would not be able to see it. And the same we have over here, right? Um, and the reason why we're able to see this whole um, um, rod differ at all is, is because overall the refractive index of all of those cells here are different than the surrounding medium again. Uh, and also because it has eaten something and uh, we're able to see that there is a different color in here. Yeah? So this is actually the reason, and, and back in the 19th uh, century when they first uh, um, you know, systematically analyzed organisms and then they, they were actually very fascinated by plant, uh, because the plants actually have a cell wall um, on the outside and this cell wall can be easily seen with a microscope. Um, but the, the, the cell membrane is, is too thin and you all need to basically, um, yeah, actually electron microscopes, which didn't exist at that time, you need electron microscopes to just be able to see the cell membrane um, as well. Way too thin and below the resolution limit of, of light microscopes. Um, so what we have um, over here um, again are two two rotifers. Also again nicely visible. If I um, yeah pause pause this again here nicely visible again are the the yeah the bacteria that are floating around on on, on the outside here um, as well. Okay, they can be seen. Yeah, you, you see again some 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 protozoans. Yeah, um, over here, um, and then again two rotifers here. Each one made of approximately one thousand cells. Each of the cells not being visible. Okay, there are a couple of examples as well, um, which I'm also going to show you, um, where sometimes um, yeah cells are quite uh, easily visible, <laughs> even though they are kind of packed closely together or reasonably closely put together. Uh, I think it's kind of fascinating as well to observe those. Uh, the complex movement, the fairly complex movement of those micro animals. Huh? So let's uh, move on um, to the next uh, topic, and that is is uh, the whole issue of, of color. I already mentioned that uh, uh, that sometimes you're able to see what those rotifers have eaten based on the color. And this one over here is Paramecium buzeria. It's also a single celled uh, uh, protozoan. And um, what we have over here on the inside is are those green dots, and those green dots um, essentially are um, are uh, yeah, algae. Yeah, what do you see? Each one of the dots uh, is an algae. They're chlorella algae. They're so-called endosymbionts. This basically means that those algae live inside the paramecium. Um, one cell, right? <laughs> um, and uh, they do photosynthesis and they're supplying the, the host cell, the paramecium, with food. And at the same time, uh, the algae receive protection and I can imagine also plenty of light because the paramecium will uh, most likely move towards light. So that's kind of both of them benefit. And here, though, these uh, little dots in here can be seen as individual cells, algae, um, and they can be seen. How is that? Well, again, because of a color difference, obviously. Huh? Um, so even if the refractive difference uh, would were to be the same, um, sometimes we are able to see individual structures because uh, of a difference uh, um, of, of a difference in color. Huh? So this, uh, to summarize a little bit, uh, is is that um, if you're aware of these things, then you're able to make, of course, a lot more sense about the things that you're able to see under the microscope. But um, if you want to make those individual cells visible, let's say in an animal tissue, then what you have to do you have to use staining techniques and uh, those staining techniques will sometimes stain the nuclei, the nucleus of the cell and then every time when you see a stained nucleus which contains the DNA of the cell then you know that there must be a, a cell and this is also how scientists are able to count the number of cells in an organism. Yeah, again here I also would like to yeah, uh, show you a little bit uh, yeah, something quite interesting over here. If you look um, at the head of the of the rotifer over here, you're going to see those tiny little those tiny little dots uh, floating around. These are bacteria, and the hair, the cilia over here on yeah on the outside, they generate a stream of water so that the bacteria are being uh, taken in, eaten up, and then inside here there's the digestive system. This round oval structure over here is an egg, and over here um, on the outside we have again uh, two, uh, two protozoans, single-celled, right? Um, and over here our multicellular, made of approximately 1,000 cells, um, yeah, our multicellular rotifer. Again, the cells so close together um, that it's not possible to see them as separate entities. Yeah? So um, one of the questions is, is always why do are why, they, why are they even multicellular animals around if uh, protozoans are also able to survive? And the reason is is that multicellular organisms generally are able to do significantly more complex tasks than single-celled organisms. Um, yeah, for example, like the uptake uh, yeah, of, of food in a digestive system. This one over here is known as the mass tax, um, which grinds up the food. Yeah, so. 
It's so basically like a chewing mechanism that we have over here. There's some kind, some kind of a, a simple digestive system, yeah, and then the nutrients are being absorbed um, into the into the organism. Huh? And um, those uh, rotifers um, also have a very complex uh, way of, of not a complex way, but an interesting way of movement. Because here on on the back we have got this is called the foot, and this foot is able to attach itself to a surface, and this allows it to move forward and to inch forward as well on a surface. In this case, it's not able to do that because. Um, I squeezed the, the rotifer um, between a cover glass and a microscope slide, but this guy over here has a little bit more freedom, and you're able to see how it uh, inches forward. But uh, have a look at the head here. Yeah, look at the head. What's going to happen in a second or so? Plop. Did you see how uh, the ring of, of cilia kind of uh, popped out? That's why those rotifers were also called or are still called wheeled animals because uh, yeah, the head has those. Uh, some on some species has this ring of, of cilia, um, which look like rotating wheels. And this already shows that multicellular animals um, are able to do significantly more complex tasks than the single-celled um, protozoans that we see um, see over here. Huh? That's uh, essentially the, the advantage of, of being a multicellular organism is, is to do more complex tasks because the cells in here or even though they're not visible <laughs> right now over here, the cells are significantly more specialized. Yeah, you know, there are simple nerve cells in here, the cells uh, for digesting food and so on, for 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 with cilia for movement and so on. Um, so there are many many different cell types inside a multicellular organisms organism, all specialized for different tasks. Okay, yeah. I just wanted to share this with you. Hope it was interesting for you. I wish I want to invite you to to uh, to share and to like uh, this video and also to subscribe um, to this channel. Um, I'm going to say goodbye for the day. Happy microbe hunting as always, and see you around next time. Bye bye.